streptococcus pneumoniae it is also called as pneumococcus it causes infection majorly in children as well as in elderly individuals high incidence rate of infection occurs in people who are suffering with viral influenza or people with low immunity or people with suffering any other respiratory infections streptococcus pneumoniae is most common cause of pneumonia in adults lobar pneumonia in adults it is also most common cause of bacterial meningitis in adults it causes otitis media in children and it can cause septicemia and other infections in humans and this is the picture of the slide of the streptococcus pneumonia organisms we can see the diplococcal arrangement of these organisms these are coccyx round shaped bacterial gram positive organism which are arranged in pairs so always the this, this organism streptococcus pneumoniae appears in diplococci in nature these are gram positive diplococcus arranged in lancet shaped in pairs or in small chains these are alpha hemolytic organisms on blood agar culture media they are non spore forming non motile in nature these are catalase negative they can't produce any catalase enzyme these are optochin sensitive on blood agar culture medium these organisms who won't grow on blood agar culture mediums with optochin presence these are quillung positive these organisms has a polysaccharide capsule which can cross react with antibodies against the capsule whenever the anti serum is added to these organisms the capsule will get reacted with the antibodies and we can see the enlargement of the capsule swollen capsule so that's what we'll call it as coulomb's positiveness which can the capsule can cross react with antibodies these are bile soluble in presence of bile these organisms will get destructed the cell membrane cell wall will get destructed so that's why these organisms are bile soluble for identification of this streptococcus pneumoniae we always prefer to use bile solubility quillung's positiveness optochin sensitivity and the hemolytic reaction alpha hemolysis these four important <coughs> diagnostic tools helpful in identifying this streptococcus pneumoniae organism these organism has a lot of virulent factors one important virulent factor these organism has is peptidoglycan layer on this peptidoglycan layer there are almost 500 varieties of proteins are present which can help in causing the infection so those are tychic acids and lipotychic acids tychic acids and lipotychic acids are similar in nature whereas lipotychic acids the tychic acids that are attaching to the cell membrane are called as lipotychic acids both these tychic acids and lipotychic acids contain phosphorylcholine molecules at the edge of these lipotychic acids they consist of choline molecules these choline molecules can perform different functions one function it can perform is it helps in addition it attaches to the choline binding receptors on the cells especially the alveolar cells which can make the primary attachment to the host cells it activates and attaches to the platelet activating factor receptors whenever these organisms activate the platelet activating factors which are present on the endothelial cells they increase the capillary permeability whenever the capillary permeability increases there is lot of serous fluid accumulation in that tissue areas because of serous fluid accumulation ultimately there will be a migration of leukocytes which can ultimately leads to cause superative condition they can also stimulate receptor mediated endocytosis whenever these organism attaches to the alveolar cells these alveolar cells they engulf this organism by receptor mediated endocytosis and these organism will enter ultimately enters into the submucosal region and which can ultimately stimulate the platelet activating factors which can lead to cause suppuration these choline molecules can be easily recognized by c reactive proteins which are present in the human tissues these c reactive proteins whenever they recognize this choline molecule they can stimulate the immune response 
by activating macrophages, by activating cytokinins, by stimulating the macrophage to release cytokinins. And other function these choline binding molecules can do is these choline binding proteins, some of these choline binding molecules can act as autolysins. That means they can destruct themselves. Autolysins, autolysis occurs. So whenever these uh, molecules act as autolysins, they distract the same pneumococcus. Whenever the pneumococcus is distracted, the cellular fragments, the cytoplasmic fragments and the cell wall fragments can act as pneumolysins. And they can also, because of this destruction of pneumococcus, they can also secrete or release as hydrogen peroxide. Because of this pneumolysins and hydrogen peroxide, the host cells will get destructed. They can decrease the ciliary action. They increase the inflammatory cytokine and release by the immune cells. They can decrease the PMN cell activity. They can decrease the complement activity. So hydrogen peroxide can also destruct the neurons, which is the major factor in causing meningitis. These pneumolysins, which are secreted or which are produced after lysis of pneumococcus, can also bind to cholesterol molecule, can be toxic to any variety of cells in the human body. Capsule. Very most of the most of this streptococcus pneumonia organisms has a capsule. The capsulated organisms, the capsulated streptococcus pneumonia organisms are highly virulent when compared to non-capsulated organisms. The capsule is mainly made up of polysaccharide. Depending upon this polysaccharide capsule structure, there are 90 serotypes or more than 90 serotypes. Some others they'll explain more than 90 serotypes. In these 90 serotypes, we have for very few serotypes, we have a vaccination. And this capsule main function is to inhibit phagocytosis by inhibiting complement C3B complement protein activity. They inhibit the C3B complement proteins. By inhibiting C3B complement proteins, there won't be any opsonization taking place in the human immune system, human body. The next virulent factor is pili. Pili is always helpful in addition. This pili always attaches to the carbohydrate receptors which are present on the host cells and they can also stimulate the immune response to secrete more tumor necrosis factor. It can also secrete IgA protease. IgA protease always inhibits the IgA and immunoglobulin activity. It can also secrete neuraminidase. Neuraminidase can also be secreted or sometimes it is attached to this streptococcus pneumoniae. And this neuraminidase always helps in addition which can, which can lead to cause otitis media, mid layer infection. It helps majorly in mid layer infection. Epidemiology it is the most common cause of pneumonia. Streptococcus pneumonia is the most common cause of pneumonia and meningitis in adults. Most susceptible individuals for streptococcus pneumonia are children as well as in elders. The people who are more susceptible as people suffering with viral infection or any other respiratory infection are immune suppressed individuals, elderly patients. And transmission is mainly by respiratory route. Step, this pneumonia and otitis media are widely seen in human population when compared to meningitis. Pathogenesis. Here we can see the animated representation of pathogenesis. This is the diplococcus pneumonia, pneumococci and it can cause mutitis media that is mid layer infection which can lead to cause mid layer infection through passing through eustachian tube these are the organisms which are attaching to the eustachian tube the attachment factors are neuraminidase choline and pili which helps this organism to attach to the eustachian tube cells in the human body and afterwards uh, the pneumolysins, autolysins destructs this organism and pneumolysins are secreted and that can lead to cause the damage of the cells here and which can ultimately lead to cause otitis media in children, especially in children.
it can cause lower pneumonia so these organisms will enter into the allular region by escaping from the respiratory epithelium so this escaping from respiratory epithelium mainly majorly occurs in people who are already suffering with respiratory tract infections like viral influenza infection or any kind of respiratory tract infection will always help this organism to escape from ciliated respiratory epithelium so they can directly enters comes and enters into the allular region so whenever they comes to the allular region the attachment occurs with the help of choline and the choline receptors and with the help of pili so whenever they attach to these cells these cells always take this organism by a receptor mediated endocytosis with the help of choline and whenever they enters into the submucosal region they can activate paf platelet activating factors and this platelet activating factors will cause permeability and which where where we can see a lot of fluid accumulation because of this fluid accumulation we can see consolidation inside the lung tissues so where, where because of fluid accumulation ultimately leads to consolidation and ultimately leads to suppuration because of lot of uh, immune cell accumulation can ultimately leads to suppuration and whenever this suppuration occurs <clears throat> we can start to see the immune response of interleukin 1 interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factors are released from pmn cells and macrophages and pmn cell activity increases inflammatory cytokines including interleukin 1 6 and tumor necrosis factors are released and macrophages activation occurs so a lot of accumulation of immune cells occurs in this area and that can lead to cause suppuration and these organisms can restrict phagocytosis during that condition by capsule the capsule inhibits c3b activity so phagocytosis won't occur and these organism because of increased permeability these organism can enters into the blood circulation and whenever they enters into the blood circulation there is a high increase chance of getting meningitis the meningitis is mainly occurs because of uh, hydrogen peroxide released by this organism and pneumolysis released by this organisms so pmn cell accumulation platelet activating factor activation can lead to cause suppuration autolysis release causes the release of pneumolysis release and leads to cause more damage in this tissue suppuration in this tissues hydrogen peroxide also cause more suppuration in this tissue pneumolysis and hydrogen peroxide whenever they are released into the blood stream they can help this organism in causing meningitis clinical conditions caused by streptococcus pneumoniae it can cause pneumonia is the most common cause of pneumonia in adults it can cause meningitis it is also most common cause of bacterial meningitis in adults it can cause otitis media especially in children sinusitis in all age groups bacteremia in pneumonia the symptoms we see is fever have headache chills cough wet blood will cause a rusty sputum they can have consolidated lung they'll have pleural effusion they'll have in x rays we can see infiltrations and they can we can also observe the cavity formation inside the lung tissues in meningitis cases we can see the symptoms fever headache vomitings the patients will have a prostration they always try, want to bend they'll have budzinski sign photophobia phonophobia in otitis media the symptoms we can see is fever headache earache and pus formation sometimes we can also see the draining of pus from the ear regions sinusitis we can see fever headache in bacteremia depends upon the patient they can have this organisms inside the blood stream and sometimes we can see the symptoms like fever malaise myalgia headache in bacteremia conditions diagnosis we can diagnose by cullen's reaction optogen test and solubility in bile and hemolytic test in cullen's reaction we use the anti serum to mix with the specimen of this organisms whenever we mix anti serum to this organisms they will cross react the capsule will cross react with the antibodies in the serum 
and the capsule start to swell you we can see here in this picture Quillen's reaction microscopic picture we can see the diplococcus are present here around that a swollen capsule because of the reaction between antibodies and polysaccharide capsule we can see the swelling of this capsule here in this micrograph next one is optogen test these organisms are sensitive to optogen here you can see on the right side this is the picture of the blood agar culture medium and these are the organisms colonies of streptococcus pneumoniae these streptococcus pneumoniae won't grow in presence of optogen this is the optogen plate which is present on this blood agar culture medium and the organisms won't grow around this optogen plate whereas here we can see another group of organisms streptococcus mitis and this streptococcus mitis are resistant to optogen they can grow colonies around the optogen in presence of optogen even these organisms can grow streptococcus mitis those are viridens group of streptococcus the third variety of diagnostic tool is solubility in bile these organisms <coughs> will get destructed in presence of bile so by adding bile to the culture medium these organisms will get destructed and we can also diagnose with the help of hemolysis test these organisms are all for hemolytic in nature treatment the drug of choice for streptococcus pneumonia is penicillin but nowadays we are seeing resistant to the penicillin very few organisms in streptococci group are resistant to penicillin so the alternative therapies for these organisms are cephalosporins erythromycin chloramphenicol and we are nowadays we are seeing multi antibiotic resistance for some groups of streptococcus pneumonia